Who remembers what Joe Biden said during the debate? Other than, uh, uh, he said, it's going to be a dark winter. Well, it is because he got elected. And I preached, I'm not kidding you. I went down to Pea Ridge and did not, I did not care what anybody thought of the message down there, only that I cared because I was preaching to me. I believed things that I'd read on the internet that were not true. And the internet lied to me. There's lies on the left side and there's lies on the right side. And no matter where you go on the internet, somebody's going to lie to you. And I went down there being honest and truthful with everybody, indicting myself for believing things that were not true. Things that I thought would happen while Trump was president that did not happen while Trump was president. Now I'm hearing that people are making things up like Biden wasn't really inaugurated. That was all fake. That was phony. It didn't really happen. Yeah, it did. Who let it happen? In fact, whose idea was it? If you don't believe that God puts in power who he wants in power, you don't believe in a powerful God the way I believe in a powerful God. And I can tell you that God does what he wants to fulfill his plan, even if it includes people becoming nothing but pure evil. It fulfills God's plan. God, God planted two trees in the midst of the Garden of Eden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Bible says that they were both in the midst of the garden, right next to each other. So that Eve had a choice. Adam had a choice. The choice that Eve made, God knew she would make it. And he already had a plan to redeem her from her bad choice. God already had it in, in Christ. The Bible said that Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. That means it was already reckoned in God's mind that Christ was going to die for the sins of mankind. Even before you committed those sins, Christ died for them. Amen. So when you've got a God like that, when you've got a God that that's, that's that smart, you keep them. Amen. But he said, Joe Biden said it'd be a dark winter. And so far it has been. It's because it's thrown a lot of people. And by the way, all these prophets on the internet that said, God told me Trump's going to have second He's going to be, he's going to be, he's going to be four more years. God told me that. I saw it plain as day. Don't worry about what all happens. Trump's still going to be president January 21st. God told me that. I don't think so. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. And according to the Bible, when it comes to a prophet like that, how many times did they have to be wrong before you say, <laughs> One time. And it staggers my mind when people go to websites and they believe lies and the lies never turn out. And they go back to the same websites looking for the new lies to believe in. It's like going to an astrologer. In fact, turn to Ephesians 6. Uh, let me tell you what astrologers are. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, 
and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, last Sunday, I did this. I said, here is the four Gospels, which are always going to be the target of those four devil types. They will always, always try to draw mankind away from what's it right here between my fingers. Words like, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That's in here. And the devil doesn't want anybody to hear that. Doesn't want them to believe it. So here is what Christ told us is the light of the world. And what you have, if you look at that list again, principalities, powers, we touched on that. The next group, group number three, are devils that are rulers of the darkness of this world. So I want you to think about that. When the sun goes down, what pops up in the sky? Stars. The moon and the stars. And God warned Israel numerous times. When you look up there and see the stars, don't worship them. Don't serve them. Astrology is that religion. Astrology says the way the stars move, stars, by the way, according to the Bible, are angels. And we know that one third of those stars up there are mean and evil. And they're going to get kicked out of heaven. So God said, when you look up there and see those lights, do not serve them. Do not worship them. Serve them means you do what you tell, they, you do what they tell you to do. And when you are, you are into astrology, whatever the stars, however they move, and whatever house Venus is, and what constellation Leo, whatever position he's in, and whatever month you were born, the stars that were shining on you on that day has determined your life course. In other words, they tell you what to do and you do what they tell you to do. And God warned us, don't fall for that. That's a lie. Don't serve them. Don't worship them because you know what they are? They are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Because they rule over the darkness. Uh, turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. I'll show it to you. Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 14. Do you believe your Bible? Say amen. God said, verse 14, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days, and for years. We use the sun, the moon, and the stars to measure out our years, our months, and our days. Then he said, and God made two great lights, the greater light to do what? Rule the day. Rule the day. That's the sun. Then he said, a lesser light to do what? Rule the night. He made the stars also. They rule the darkness. So you de basically, these are gods, devils, Evil spirits, evil angels, unclean spirits, beasts that rule over people who walk in darkness. How many of you ever walked in darkness before? I did it in church. I did it in church. It can be done. I know it can be done. So let's pray that God will give us wisdom for this message. Pray that God will give me the words to say. I'll say what he wants me to say. I'll shut up when he wants me to shut up. But I'll tell you the truth. Because there's nothing that we need more in this world than the truth. Amen. Father, we do ask your blessing. We come before you today very humbly. Reverently. Begging you, Father, to show us truth. To incline our ears unto your word. To listen to you. 
And Father, I'm getting to the point, God, I don't even want to read the stories people send me, the videos people want me to watch. I'm getting to where I don't even want to look at them. Because I just don't trust. I just don't trust stuff anymore. I don't trust the left wing news. I don't trust the right wing news. I, don't, I think the waters have gotten so muddy with lies that I just don't. Maybe God, maybe that's why you told us to walk by faith and not by sight. You told us in that to not trust the sight of our eyes. Because our eyes will see one thing, what the devil wants us to see, and we'll believe that. We'll fall for it. But you told us that we're to trust in you with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding is what you told us to do. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would renew me and renew the knowledge, God, that I have of your word. And that I would give it out and share it freely. And though I may be criticized. Because I've gone against somebody's conspiracy theory. Or I've gone against somebody's belief. Or I've gone against somebody's doctrine. Father, help me to stand by this book. And not deviate from it. Because this is the only truth that I currently am aware of. The only thing that I trust anymore is your word. And bless these people. Give us, Father, a heart that will turn aside neither to the right nor to the left. But will walk the straight and narrow path. That leads to everlasting righteousness. That we would follow your words, Father. Not believing the sight of our eyes. But trusting only in your word. And Father, if there's somebody here this morning. Or somebody listening to me. That is in darkness. There's devils that are there. Really telling them what to do. Ruling over them. Ready to devour them. Father, would you deliver them from that, bring to them the marvelous light of your word. So bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Turn to John 1. When you have rulers over darkness... These are spirits, evil spirits... Remember I said, since there's four categories, four different types of spirits, the target then is the gospel. The target's always the gospel. Because just believing in conspiracy theories and just believing some things on the internet, that does not save you. Just being a conservative instead of a liberal in this country, that does not save you. Just having a religion, that does not save you. Only the cross of Jesus Christ can save you. Only he who is the light of the world can save you. In John chapter 1, we have, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And look at this, and the life was the light of men. And, I, and that light, verse 5, shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Those people who refuse to believe what God said in His Word, they abide in darkness, and whenever the Word is given to them somehow, some way, whenever it's preached to them, or that somebody read the Bible to them, or they happen upon something, they read a Bible verse... Immediately they just reject it. They don't believe it. Because they're in darkness. And darkness doesn't comprehend light. It tries to take over and shut out the light. 
And there are many people, many people in this world, including many people who attend church who are in darkness. Because they do not believe the light of the word of God. John said, verse 7, that he came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the, into the world. So imagine, imagine your life now, if you were blind. Being blind is, a, I would say, a, a hard thing. We used to have a man that went to our church years ago. And we loved him. He was blind and he would often tell me about how difficult it was for him to even trust people. Like he, would, he had a hard time at times trusting me as his preacher. He said, because I can't see. I can't see your face. I can't see your reactions. I can't trust the judgment of my eyes. All I have to go on is what I hear and what I think in my mind. And you know, uh, eventually, sad to say, his mind sort of left him. He became so convinced that everybody was out to get him. He even rejected his own family, rejected his own daughter. Because he thought everybody was out after him. There was a man in our church that went over to do some work at his house. And I knew the man. And this blind man acute called me and he said, that guy that came over here, he said, he stole something out of my house. I know he did. And I went, I don't think he did. He said, well, I can't find it. And he said, I know where it was. And I said, Eld, I know he did not steal that from you. And he kind of halfway accused me. And I said, I've been through your house. Trust me. There's nothing in your house that I even want. Much less would I ever take anything from you. But he got to where he just didn't trust people. Why? Because he was in darkness. There's types of darkness. There's the darkness that comes with those, as I've talked about today already, those who suffer depression. Depression's very dark. It's like you're in a pit. And it's a very dark pit. And there's no way out. And it's very dark. And it's scary. You ever gone, anybody ever gone in a cave? We used to take the boys out to Merrimack State Park out in Sullivan. They got caves you can go in there. And one of them goes back pretty deep. And there's no light that gets back there. When I was young and limber, I could crawl through that little space and go back and they had a back chamber back in there. And it's pretty neat. But you turn that light out and you have no way which is left, right, north, south, east, west. I mean, you have nothing. That's often what it's like to be depressed. You can't see a way out of it. Some people are in... Emotional darkness. Some people are in physical darkness through the blindness of their eyes, physical eyes. And then some people, the worst kind, the worst kind I can think of is to be blind spiritually. And what that means is you cannot see the truth. Even when it's right in front of you. The Jews who their Savior was right in front of them, were blinded, and they couldn't see who it was. Nothing worse than that. Because they refused Him whom God sent to save them. They refused it. And they walked in darkness. And according to the Bible, blindness in part has happened unto Israel. To this day, they're still in darkness. Still blinded. And they cannot see who their Savior is. So, I want you to think about it. Look, look up on the screen. In fact, I found this verse, and I'm going, that's it right there. Psalm 104, verse 20. God said, Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Now, who's ever gone out into the woods in the middle of the night with no flashlight, no torch, nothing, and just been out there in the darkness. 
A little creepy, isn't it? You know, there's black bears down in Missouri. Some people would never think of going to a cemetery in the middle of the night. Moon's not shining, no stars out, can't see nothing. They would just fear that. When it's dark, God has made it so that there are certain creatures that thrive in darkness. Owls is one of them. You know, owls is mentioned in the Bible as the type of spirits. Owls are flesh eaters. They're devourers. They consume flesh. They're looking for victims is what they are. When you shine a light or take a picture of certain animals in the dark and you see the whites of their eyes shining back, you know what that tells you? That God has given them night vision, the ability to see. Did you know that humans don't have that? When you take a picture of certain people and the flash goes off and you'd often get that red eye, you know what that is? That's the light going in their eye, bouncing off the red blood cells and the, and the red blood vessels in the back of their eye. And it returns that red dot there that shows up in the picture. And that tells us that God did not give us the ability to see in the night. So doesn't it give you sort of a sense of the creeps to know that while you can't see them, they can see you. Lions. Serpents. All of these things are types of devils in the Bible. God says they're beasts. And they are fierce. And they are ferocious. And because you cannot see them, but they can see you. They are going to, listen to this now. They're there to make sure you stay in darkness. What did we say the light was? We said the light was Jesus Christ. Paul talked about the light of the glorious gospel. Lest they should see the light of the glorious gospel. So he said the way for man to be saved has been hidden from people by the God of this world who has blinded the eyes and the minds of people so that they would not see that there is a way out. What if you were trapped in a tunnel or a cave and didn't know the way out? What if you worked down one of these mines back years ago when we had the mines going down there in Bonterre and other places and people stuck down in their mines? I remember doing a tour of Bonterre mines and I was, I think I was in fourth grade at the time. I was a young guy and the guy doing the tour guide, he said, I want everybody to stand still for a minute. So we all stood still and he said, I mean, don't move. So we all stood still. We didn't know what he was going to do. And he hit a switch and every light in that place went off. And he said, can you tell where you are? And I'm just going, "Uh uh-uh. Imagine. And of course, down there at at Bonterre Mines, there's areas now that have been flooded in with water. You misstep, you're going to fall 100 feet and drown. Never know what hit you. And while you're walking through that darkness, your hope is... That maybe you'll take a turn somewhere in those caverns, somewhere in that cave, somewhere in that pit. And look and maybe see the light at the entrance shining very faintly off in the distance. And the hope is, I'm looking for the light. And I'm telling you, there's people still out there looking for the light. Amen. But while they're there, they have devils. That are there to make sure they never come to the light. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. I'm not asking anybody to raise their hand. In fact, I don't want you to. But if I were to, if I were to ask you personally, your worldview, your outlook on life, the way you've been taught and the way you believe. Do you believe that every word in the Bible is the perfect, inerrant Word of God. And if you don't believe that, you're in darkness. 
Because I've discovered that if people don't believe the Bible, they do believe something to replace it. Usually, they will either believe themselves and their own thinking, or they will put their faith and their confidence in other people to tell them what's the truth. Let me read a verse to you. Turn to Romans chapter 3. Let me read a verse to you. It's very simple. God gave me this verse on the way down to Arkansas and I read it to them. Romans chapter 3. Look at verse 4. Read that verse for a second. Read it. I don't have it on the screen. I don't have it in my notes anywhere. Read that verse. What does that say? Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Is every man a liar? That means you. You know what the worst thing is? When you tell a lie so much that you actually end up believing that lie, that version of the story, like us deer hunters do. Right, bub? When we tell the story about how we killed the deer, we change it. We rewrite it. And you know, after a while, 10 years down the road, our version of it is the only part of it that we remember. So we actually end up believing our own lies. But that ain't really how it happened. So I'm asking you the question again. If you examine your thoughts and your belief system and say, you know, I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. I don't believe everything in here is right. I think it's got some good things in it, but I don't believe, you know, men wrote the Bible. Well, that's not really how it happened. But if you have it as part of your belief system that you don't believe everything that's in the Bible. The, the science of this world tells us that the earth is about 10 billion years old. But according to the Bible, is that true? No. Not even close. So right then and there, you have to make a choice. Am I going to believe what the scientists tell us? Or am I going to believe what God said? They created it in six literal days, 6,000 years ago. Am I going to believe that? And that's what I'm getting at. If you don't believe what God said, you have to believe something that somebody said, but God has already told you they're a liar. And I'm not. God says I'm never a liar. I'll never lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. Isaiah chapter 13. Turn there. This, see this, remember this picture here. With the owls and the lions and the dragons, the serpents. When you turn to Isaiah 13, you're going to find out what I'm talking about. How true this is. In Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10, God, this is a prophecy concerning Babylon. And he said, verse 10, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth and the moon shall not cause their light to shine. So God says, there's coming a time when I will not let the moon shine. I will not let the sun shine and I will not let the stars shine. I'm going to put this world in darkness. And then, when he said that, watch what happens. Look in verse 21. The wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. And their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. And owls. That's, what I, that's why I put that up on the screen. Owls shall dwell there. And satyrs. The word satyr literally means devils shall dance there and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces and her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged have you ever have you ever stayed in a place maybe your house is like this have you ever stayed in a place 
where in the middle of the night, all of a sudden you heard sounds all over the place. There's some people, I have yet to hear it, who swear that they hear doors slamming in this church and ain't nobody here. Cabinets shutting. Lights coming on and off. I've never seen that. But there's some people here who swear that happens. I do believe that in darkness, these spirits will show up. So, think about this. You've gone now for weeks. Haven't read your Bible. What that means is, now you're in darkness. And now that you're in darkness, who's showing up? The owls, the dragons, the devils, the wild beasts. They're going to show up because as long as it's daylight, they don't come out. You very seldom see owls flying around in the daytime. Usually, most animals get attacked by wild animals at night because they have been given an advantage. They can see in the dark. And the other animals may not be able to, to, to do that so well. So what I'm telling you is, I am guaranteeing you that without you forming a bond with the Bible, you're in darkness. And while you're in that darkness, the lions will be there. And the serpents, the dragons will be there. And the devils will be there. And they're not leaving because there's no light shining. You ever been in somebody's icky house? Where they don't clean very much and you turn the light on and cockroaches just go. <laughs> where are they running to, John? Darkness. The darkness. Cockroaches don't like the light either, do they? That's what I'm talking about. Acts chapter 26. Notice how, notice how Paul turns this. The apostle Paul says this. The Apostle Paul says that it's his job to open their eyes. He's asking God, God, open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. Blind men that came to Jesus, did he leave them blind? No, he healed their eyes so they could see. He healed them. And they went and told everybody in town, this man healed my eyes, I can see now. Do you remember the day when you woke up and you realized you were a sinner and you were needed grace and God opened your eyes to that and you found Jesus and you got saved and you said, God, open my eyes. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And when you're in the light, the rulers of the darkness of this world have no more power over you. I've had times... In the years that I've pastored, trying to deal with church people, not every church member is a good church member. I found that out. I had a pastor come to me Friday night and he said, Mike, I got to tell you about a situation I got going on in my church. I got a guy that he started coming here and he said he's constantly contradicting the Sunday school teacher. He's constantly correcting the Bible. He wants me to let him start doing Bible studies because he says, I just want to come and show this church what I know. Who is that guy? Sure he is. He's a Jezebel. Why? It's all about him. He's trying to tell everybody in that church, come follow me. Well, the people in that church already have a pastor. 
They don't need a monster with two heads. And I, I told this pastor, now this may sound harsh. I said, that guy's in darkness. And he is trying to lead your people into his darkness. The sooner you get him out, the better off you're going to be. And you know, he told me, he said, nobody in this church trusts him. They, they, they figured out who he is. This man walks in darkness and he wants you to be in his darkness with him. So he said, Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Notice how he put the two together. Darkness, the power of Satan. Satan rules over you. When you're in darkness. When you're in the light, God is the light, John said, and in him is no darkness at all. You know the, the symbol of the yin yang? You know what that symbol is? It has a black area and a white area. And in the white area, there's a black dot. And in the black area, there's a white dot. And you know what it means? It means that in all good, there's a little evil. And in all evil, there's a little good. But is that true? Is there any darkness with God at all? No. So that what that symbol represents is a lie, doesn't it? He said to remove them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. By the way, while you're in darkness, you can never see your sins for what they really are. While you're in darkness, you will never see what your sins are doing to your wife, your husband, your children, your family, your friends. You'll never see what it does to them. Do you think a man that's a drunk sees the damage that he does to his family? No, that man's in darkness. He doesn't, he doesn't see it because he doesn't want to see it. And he doesn't want... By the way, where does he go to drink? A really dark tavern. There are no taverns lit up like churches. Amen? Amen? But sad to say, I know some churches that are dimly lit like taverns now. You know why, D? They love darkness rather than light. Say that again. Churches painted black. They must have got that from Mick Jagger. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. Colossians 1.13, who hath God, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You see, while you're in darkness, it holds power over you, will not let you go. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now we're in the light. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. That means, Brother Brian, when God gets ready to show you your sin, He's going to show it to you. You're going to be reading the Bible one day, and God's going to say, Brian, this is about you. Now do you see what you've been doing? And God's going to be able to deal with you because you believe what God said and you want God to change you. You want God to make you a better person. So he said, we're the children of the day. We're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. There's that drunk for you. Drunks love darkness. Dope addicts love darkness. For they that sleep... In fact, think about this. Anybody who has a personal, private sin, do they do it in front of everybody or away from everybody? They do it in darkness. 
because they don't want anybody to see them do it. Winter thieves most likely to come into your house. Middle of the night. Who remembers the Southside Rapist years ago? That guy used to go around St. Louis raping all those old women. His modus operandi, this is before you guys came down. His modus operandi, his method of operation was he would wait till dark. And he would spot a house, he would scope out a house where he knew an, a woman, usually an elderly woman, lived by herself. And he would wait until the middle of the night and then quietly break in a window of some kind and get in that house and rape that woman. And it took him forever to find that guy. And they finally caught up with him. And I, I happened to be preaching a revival down in Licking, Missouri, where the prison is that was holding that guy. A&E was going to do a special on him and interview him. And they had him, what they thought, in solitary confinement, but they, they would let him out every now and then and, and so on. And they asked the guy, if you were let out of here, would you ever go back to doing that? And you know what he said? There's female guards here. As soon as that aired, they locked him down tight. That man walked in darkness. And he did his deeds in darkness. That ought to tell you something. What you're afraid of to do in the light probably isn't right. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. We're children of the day. That means that those devils cannot rule over you. They have no power. They have no authority over you. As long as you stay in the light. Psalm 107. Verse 10, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Let me say this. Those of you who have lost loved ones that have died. Is that not darkness? That's darkness. It's a bad darkness. Because generally, when you start the grieving, and I mean not the funeral parlor grieving, after the funeral parlor, when you start that grieving, generally, you sit in the darkness and weep and mourn and cry. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction in iron. Some of you sitting here, some of you watching online, you have chains of iron. You have chains of afflictions on you. Sins. Alcohol. Drugs. Lust. Depression. Lying. Stealing. Pride. Because they notice why they're in darkness. They rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. They removed from themselves the light of the Word of God. Now they sit in darkness and complain about the darkness when before they had the light all along. Proverbs 20 verse 20. Whoso, listen to this one. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. You know what I believe? I believe that everybody alive in their soul, there is a light like a candle burning. That is what gives them the ability to have a knowledge of God to be saved by that knowledge. But I can't remember what word it is. And what it means is from Eastern mysticism. What it means is to be blown out like a candle. And I think some people 
can get so far down in sin that God goes and snuffs out that last remaining light that they had in their soul. And you know what that means? God has cursed them with everlasting darkness. They're never going to see. Ever. Job 38, 2. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Let me ask you a question. Is it possible for someone to put you in darkness by something they said to you? You better believe it is. Somebody can catch you on the wrong day. A day when maybe the clouds are already over your life. And they can say something to you and all of a sudden it just puts you. I've had days where people, I remember a time a guy said something to me in this church. And he put me in such a darkness. It took me weeks to climb out of that. I was going to leave. I was going to quit. Because his counsel with words without knowledge. He said stupid things to me. And it put me in such a dark mood, I couldn't do nothing. That happens, doesn't it? Psalm 69, verse 21. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. What's that about? What's that verse about? They gave me vinegar to drink. It said... Psalm 69, guess what? Was written a thousand years before Jesus. So can you imagine, Sister Donna, that you opened up a trunk, an antique trunk that your great-grandmother gave you for an inheritance. It had been handed down by her great-grandmother. It was at least 300 years old. And you read in there a piece of paper with not only your name on it, but your husband's name and all your kids. By your great, 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 great grandmother. You would go, how in the world did she know that? David wrote this a thousand years before Jesus hung on the cross. And he knew that they were going to give him vinegar to drink while he was on the cross. Now, I don't know about you. When I get thirsty, I do not want vinegar or castor oil. That's for my mom, who's hopefully watching. So God said, let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. When you continue... And for as long as you continue to reject Jesus Christ, you will be in darkness. I got to move on. 74, Psalm 74, 19. Oh, deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. Have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Owls and lions and serpents. They don't care who you are. There'll be cruel authority to you while you're in that darkness. Psalm 88, 4. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I'm as a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave. Whom thou rememberest no more and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit in darkness and in the deeps. And then he said in verse 12, same chapter. Shall thy wonders be known in the dark and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? Usually when we're in the dark, you know what we forget? We forgot even what light looks like. And we forgot where that light would come from. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintance into darkness. Hey, that happens in marriages, doesn't it? Usually, when a marriage busts up, darkness is there. Because you know why? The husband 
doesn't know the wife anymore. The wife doesn't know the husband anymore. He's not the man that she married. And that causes a severage in that marriage and they bust up. Proverbs 2.11 Notice this. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh froward things. Who lead the paths of unrightness. To walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice to do evil. And delight in the frowardness of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked like serpents. And they froward in their paths. Proverbs 4.19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. You're a blind man. And you might think you have it all together. And you're leading other blind people. You're the blind leading the blind because of your sin. You love your sin more than you love God and you're in darkness. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark and they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? You think that you can get away living the way you're living in secret and think that not even God sees you, but he can I got to move on. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Here's the, here's the remedy for this. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Somebody raise your hand and say amen if you are glad that God called you out. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. He's talking about the Bible. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Psalm 119 or 105. Say this verse with me out loud. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What are you going to do when you find yourself in darkness? You can either curse the darkness or light the candle. Which is better? Light the candle. You light that candle and you won't have to worry about the owls and the devils and the lions showing up. To devour you. Light that candle. Let's pray. Father. My mind's weak. My body's tired. I ache. I'm ready to go lay down. But I don't want to leave this place. Without giving somebody the opportunity. To call upon you. And say God show me the light. I'm tired of being in darkness. I'm tired of living in sin. I'm tired of being down in the pit. And God, I can't even see my way out to save myself. God, would you lead me to light? Show me what's wrong with my life. Show me what I'm doing wrong. Show me what I'm not doing right. Do it to me in love, Father, for I need mercy and not justice. I need grace and not judgment. And Father, if there's anybody here today or anybody listening to my voice right now that needs the light in their life, they have but to ask and you'll give it to them. You've done it with me. And God, I would be the first to stand up in this church and say, God, I am the least deserving of that light. And there's not anybody, and I mean anybody, in this room that you can't help. Father, you know that I've known and I know some of the sins of people in this room. Some of them know mine. And Father, you brought me out. 
and put me in light. And Father, there's some people I got on my mind today, my heart. I ask you, God, to bring them forth out of darkness and to bring them into your light so that these rulers of the darkness of this world no longer have any power over them. They can't make them do anything. Their authority is gone because the light is present. Father, bless these people. I love them. You love them. Shine the light in their life and in their hearts. And then help us, God, to shine that light everywhere we go. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? Appreciate you coming today. I mean it. I don't take it for granted. You could have gone to church anywhere today. You could have stayed home today. You came here. That means a lot to me. Pray for one another. Pray for our church. Pray for our ministry. The food has been purchased. We have but to deliver it. Should be going out this week. Pray that those who receive that food also receive the light of Jesus Christ along with it. Amen. That would be great, wouldn't it? For if we fed 1,200 people and 1,200 people got saved. That would be awesome. So we'll just, we'll just pray for that, all right?